Hey guys, uh, welcome back to another video. So, if you're a foreigner and you're thinking about uh, moving to the Philippines, do you need to learn the language? Well, the simple answer is no. Um, but in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's a good thing to learn the language. So the national language of the Philippines is Filipino. You've maybe heard me talking about this in previous videos. Tagalog is the basis for Filipino. So Tagalog originated in Manila, I believe. Um, and the word Tagalog actually comes from, from the river. So the people that lived in Manila lived near the river. And this language um, originated there. Um, according to what I found online. So that being said, Tagalog became the basis for Filipino, which was only really uh, classified as the national language um, in the 80s, I think, if I'm not mistaken. If I get any of this wrong, don't shoot me down in flames. I'm just a daft foreigner. So I actually um, started learning Tagalog uh, some time ago. It was when my wife was pregnant and what happened was we rented an apartment in Manila, in Malate. And I went there, um, I was working in Malaysia at the time, and I went there, um, I tried to go there once a month when she was pregnant. Uh, our son was born in the Philippines. And I remember the first time, the first time I went there, um, I decided to get a tattoo with um, a Sampaguita. A Sampaguita, if you don't know, is the national flower of the Philippines. It's otherwise known as the jasmine flower. So after I got the tattoo done, I, um, I got my wife's name put on the tattoo just next to the flower. And I wanted to say to her in uh, Filipino, um, this is a gift for you. So I learned my uh, uh, words. And the phrase is, as far as I'm aware, as far as I can remember, para sa iyo ang regalong ito. So, uh, for you, uh, this gift, directly translated. And I got to the apartment that we were renting in uh, Manila. And I walked in and I took my shirt off. Uh, the tattoo is actually just uh, here, this side. I took my shirt off and I said, para sa iyo ang regalong ito. Anyway, needless to say, um, she didn't quite understand the first time, so I had to try and say it again. <laughs> and then she was completely confused. She had this strange look on her face. I had to point at the tattoo before she realised. <laughs> so sometimes a direct translation um, doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. So I actually have a book, um, uh, and I've got two CDs with it. I don't have a CD player, CD player anymore. So what I did was I decided to um, invest in another book and um, try and read it on my Kindle. Um, so the book, uh, I'll show you the book in this video, but the book cost me 11 quid, um, which is about you know, $14 US. And I've only just started reading it uh, recently. What, what it says in the book is, if you go through all the exercises and everything, um, in 250 hours, you should be able to um, speak Filipino or Tagalog at a reasonable level, uh, and also uh, write in the language. So I thought to myself, well, 250 hours, if I did an hour a day, that's seven hours a week, 28 hours a month. Multiply that by 10 would be 280 hours. So yeah, maybe around six months would be um, a good figure to aim at. But one, uh, one, one good thing about the book as well um, that I've got, it actually has audio as well. So it explains to you at the beginning of the book where to find the audio. And you can find it online and you can play back the exercises on maybe your phone um, I would recommend not using Kindle um, if you're going to invest in this book because it's not formatted in Kindle format. And uh, when I realised that, I thought I'd made a mistake. So I've actually got a tablet, um, quite a big tablet, 10 and a half inch tablet. And uh, using the Kindle app, 
it's fine uh, in that. Um, but you've got to zoom in a bit and, and whatnot. So you can listen to the audio on your phone whilst reading it on a tablet. Um, another good thing about the book is it just doesn't just explain how to how to learn Filipino. Okay, it, it actually explains about the culture um, in the Philippines, the culture of the people, and why some Westerners can sometimes be a bit confused when maybe some uh, Filipinos don't like to be direct. Uh, they, they certainly don't like confrontation and you know sometimes find it difficult to disagree. This is what it says in the book. Again, don't shoot me down in flames. I'm just repeating what's in the book. Um, so let's get into the book. Uh, before we do that, I won't, I won't bore you with too much uh, details of the book. I think it's about three minutes long, but I might shorten that uh, before I um, publish this video. But I'll highlight the, the areas that are good, and I'll show you how the format looks. I'd also want to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel. So um, if you're enjoying the content, uh, please also like the video. It helps with the YouTube algorithm, apparently. So this is the front page, and it just shows you um, uh, what's, in, what's included. Uh, you've got free online audio. Complete guide for beginners, uh, the national language, uh, it says basic Tagalog, uh, Filipino. Here's the contents. So you can see here, they also have actually um, illustrations, which I'll show you um, in this video. Uh, they have a lot of different topics here. Um, so it's very, very detailed, as you can see. Uh, this is a continuation of the, um, the contents. Um, and it really lays it out. Um, and, and good format. The, the audio um, is available to download at the bottom of that contents page. This is just a map of the Philippines, which uh, I'm sure if you're moving to the Philippines, you'll be well, well aware of by now. Um, but it's always nice to have, uh, just for reference. So, understanding the Filipino from within. Psicolo Yang Filipino, uh, Filipino psychology. That explains about what I was talking about. Um, lesson one uh, explains about the Tagalog alphabet. Now there's 28 letters in the alphabet. You've got your usual A to Z. Uh, you also have Ny and Ng, the two additional letters. Um, now there, there's a, a Spanish influence as well. And what you'll find is there's a lot of um, familiarity with the uh, English language. So you'll see some words in English that have been slightly changed um, and used in the Filipino language. Things like uh, academic, academic, uh, cinema, cine, uh, driver, dry, driver, traffic, traffic. So all, all things like that are very, very recognisable. This is the illustration I was telling you about. I don't know if these are any use or not, but uh, it breaks up the monotony, if nothing else. Um, another good reason to learn um, uh, Filipino is, you know, the older generation in the provinces don't all speak um, good English. Uh, so that's what I found, you know, with my wife's parents and family. So it can be difficult if you're the, the only one there speaking English. So it's always good and I really think it'll improve your quality of life if you can um, converse uh, with the local people in any country, not just in the Philippines. Certainly it worked for me uh, in the past uh, in France and Norway when I learned the language there. So something to think about guys and as always Thanks for watching. Cheers and out. Bye.